Welcome back, my dear sweet friends. This is the channel Frugal Money Saver. So happy you are here joining us. If you're here for the first time, we welcome you. My name is Emmy and my husband is Paul. We had a nor'easter over the weekend. What is a nor'easter? For those of you who may not know, it is a storm that comes up from the south and follows the coast and it kind of spins when it hits the north usually. It brought snow, a bunch of wind, and some very, very cold temperatures. It was beautiful, but I have to say the shoveling is getting old now. It really is, it's getting old. My poor husband, <laughs> it's like, all right, we're done. We're moving to Florida. We hope this video finds you all well. Today, we have a fun video. We are going to go over how we did honestly on our no spend January. We are gonna keep it real and we are gonna tell you exactly what we did, how we did, where we saved. The other thing we're gonna be sharing with you is our plans for forward February. What we are gonna take from our no spend January and bring over to February and continue on with. We are going to share four delicious, comforting, cold weather meals out of one chicken. One chicken, I'm gonna show you how to make four meals out of it that are just economical, frugal, cheap, however you wanna call it. You will be pleasantly surprised by how wonderful these recipes turned out. And then the last thing is I have something I have to tell Paul at the very end of the video. So stick around, do you have any idea what it is? No, I have no clue. Nothing? <laughs> no, no, nothing. What did I do? <laughs> you didn't do anything. All right, so this is just gonna be a great video. Sit back, relax, and let's get right into the kitchen to start with. We are going to make a crispy, delicious oven roasted chicken. And we're starting with a whole chicken. It's about five and a half pounds, roughly. And we washed it and we dried it and we took the innards out. And then here what I have is a pan that I just put some tin foil and a rack in. And that will keep the chicken from sitting in its own juices, which we are not crazy about because then the skin doesn't get crispy. And then in this bowl, I've got a half a teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of rosemary, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, about a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So just your basic spices. And then here I have some tops of the celery that are extremely flavorful. We're gonna use those to stuff the chicken. And then about a tablespoon or so of butter that I just chopped up into little pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is take these spices and just mix them together. And I'm also crushing the rosemary while I'm mixing it together. The rosemary's dried, so that just kind of releases the fragrance. Just take a little bit of this and I'm gonna rub it all on the inside of this chicken. Can I tell you this is probably my least favorite thing to do, right, Paul? Yeah. Oh. Take the celery tops and I'm gonna put them right inside. Just keeps it moist, keeps it juicy. Take some of these pieces of butter and I'm gonna lift the skin and I'm just gonna place them under the skin. What that's going to do is just keep the chicken moist. You don't have to do this. We like it this way. It makes a really juicy chicken. And I lift the back as well, separating the skin. Put a piece in there and a piece in there. So I'm also gonna throw, I don't know, maybe two pieces inside the chicken. And the rest, what we'll do is after we season it, we're just gonna lay them on top. Now I'm just gonna take this seasoning and I am gonna rub it all over the chicken, front and back. I also lifted the skin and put some seasoning under the skin as well. Just gonna take these couple pieces of butter and put them right on top. Make sure you wash your hands well after this. Now I'm going to put it in the oven 
at 350, it's probably going to take about an hour and a half to cook, if not a little more. You want the internal temperature of a whole chicken to be about 180 degrees when it's done. And if you want, while it's cooking in the oven, baste it a little bit. So let's get this in the oven. What a delicious looking chicken. Now we like our skin crispy, so we tend to keep it in a little bit longer. You have to make sure the internal temperature is at least about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you start cutting it and you see red blood, you put that chicken right back in the oven. You wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through. And with a whole chicken, sometimes takes a little longer. This took about an hour and 45 minutes or so. It looks absolutely perfect. We are going to slice this up and we are going to enjoy a delicious chicken dinner. This would be the first meal from our chicken. Paul is having a thigh and a leg, and I'm going to have the two wings. I love the wings. And then here what we have, I just took a bag of frozen string beans and carrot. I coated them in olive oil and seasonings and just put them in an air fryer and roasted them for a few minutes. Little grated Parmesan cheese. Perfect. And then I made a simple milk gravy from the chicken drippings. And we're just going to put that over the chicken. Did you hear Dixie? This looks so good. So we wish you bon appetito. We are making a chicken pot pie today. If you saw my last haul, we got pie crust for 50 cents a piece, the Pillsbury pie crust. Now the original recipe, I will link down below as I will with all the recipes, called for a half a pound of chicken. It seemed like a lot when you see how much vegetables we're using, because remember we want to make meat a part of the meal, but it doesn't have to be the major bulk of the meal. So for this whole pot pie, all this meat comes to just about 6.2 ounces, which is a little less than a half a pound, but that's a lot of white chicken breast meat and it looks delicious. We're gonna need two cups of chicken stock. Now this is my homemade chicken broth, but you can use whatever you have. We're going to use one pie crust. You can make a pot pie with one crust on the bottom, one crust on the top, but honestly, do you really need two crusts? One will be fine. Today is Sunday and we went to church. So before we left for church, I wanted to prep everything so that when we came home, we could film and just put the pot pie together with you. What I did was I had a half a bag of mixed vegetables in the freezer and a half a bag of peas. I ran them under hot water and just quickly defrosted them. I took two potatoes and I diced them and then I boiled them till they were fork tender. You have to start with cooked potatoes in a pot pie. So as you can see, these are gonna be the star of this pot pie. Here, I took a quarter onion and a large stalk of celery and diced them. And do you remember last night's dinner was the roasted chicken? I took the extra gravy and we're gonna be adding that in it as well. And we need a little flour, some seasoning, some milk. Let's get the onions and celery sizzling. The original recipe called for a third cup of butter. Seemed like a lot to me, so I did two tablespoons and I melted it. We have our chopped up celery and onion, and we're just gonna saute this over medium heat in the butter until the onions are translucent and the celery has softened. Instead of a pie plate, because we have so many yummy veggies, I'm using a 2.8 liter casserole dish and I just greased it. This is such a great frugal meal because it uses what you have. Now I'm gonna take the chicken and I'm just gonna add it to the vegetables. And now what I'm doing is just mixing this all together. Now by all means, you can use fresh carrots and celery, and whatever vegetables you have, just make sure you boil them up or saute them first because they're not gonna spend enough time in the oven 
to cook thoroughly. So that filled that nicely. You can see how beautifully these sauteed. Now I'm going to take two and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Just gonna sprinkle that over the celery and the onion. Cook this down a little bit. You don't want that raw flour taste. Now in this measuring cup, I have two cups of broth and two thirds cup of milk. I just mixed it all together. You can see this is my homemade stock. There's chicken underneath. I keep it frozen in one cup containers in the freezer. And what I'm also going to add in for extra flavor is that leftover gravy I made last night. Now you do not have to add that extra gravy, but I had it left over. It'll be fine without it, but I just don't want to waste it. Now we're going to add a little bit of seasoning to this as well. And I'm eyeballing this. I'm going to add a little bit of onion powder, some cracked black pepper, and a little bit of garlic. At this point, you can always add salt as well. Now we're just gonna cook this down till it gets nice and thick. So I have been whisking it and you can see how nice and thick this has gotten. So I would say this is done. I did taste it and I did add about a quarter teaspoon of salt and some more black pepper. So now you're gonna pour this over our mixture. It is very hot. Please do this carefully. Oh my goodness. And we're just pouring all this delicious sauce over our veggies and chicken. Did you see how easy this was to make? Our oven preheated to 425 degrees. Now comes the fun part. We are taking our Pillsbury crust. I am so crust challenged. You people have no idea. I'm going to just lay it on here and I'm going to do a little crimping. Like I don't even know how to crimp pie crust. And you all who are pie crust experts, please, I hope you're not giggling at me. I kind of feel that you might be. So I'm going to turn the camera off and try to like do something to make you proud of me. I'll be right back. Okay, this is as good as it gets. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? That's why you guys love me, right? Now, what I am going to do, though, is put a couple slits in it. Now, we're going to put it in that preheated 425-degree oven for about 30 minutes. This cooked 35 minutes. And yes, my edges got a little crispy. I did cover them with foil, but I think I was a little too late covering them with foil. But still, it looks amazing. We are going to let it sit to let it just settle. It is really boiling right now. And then we'll cut it and we'll see how it is. Let us cut into this and see. Ooh, nice flaky crust. This is good. All righty, here we go. Let's have a piece. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This looks really good. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, I think it's awesome. Look at this. Oh my goodness. All those veggies, wow, but it looks just delicious. I know this isn't a very appetizing oh. shot, but I just wanted to show you oh. how much the pot pie thickened when it was left to cool a little bit. Really, really a win on this one. It was delicious. And you can see how much we took off. We still have so much <laughs> left. We have a whole breast and we have a whole leg and a thigh still that we haven't even touched. For our third meal, we are making chicken parmigiana pasta. So you're going to need 24 ounces of tomato sauce, pasta sauce. I make my own. That's why I put it in here. It was frozen. A half a cup of mozzarella, a quarter cup of parmesan, about a half a pound of penne or some kind of short pasta. You don't want to use spaghetti for this. What I did was 
I took the meat off of the leg and the thigh and a little bit of the breast and we have two cups of that cooked chicken into bite-sized pieces. A quarter of chopped onion and one large clove of garlic. We're gonna need a little olive oil and some Italian herb seasoning. The first thing I'm gonna do is boil the pasta according to the package directions. So in this pot, I have about a tablespoon of olive oil heating up. Now I will link the original recipe down below. In the original recipe, it called for cooking the pasta in the tomato sauce, but I read the reviews and everyone said the pasta didn't cook. So we're cooking our pasta separate. So you're gonna cook your pasta just like you would normally. In this pot, we are going to add our onions. Don't add the garlic yet, it will burn. So we're gonna cook down these onions over medium heat till they just get translucent. So these cook down beautifully. Now I'm going to add the garlic. Garlic burns super quick, and when it does, it gives a very bitter taste. So all you wanna do is just cook it till you smell it, which usually takes a few seconds, literally. We are going to take our 24 ounces of pasta sauce. Be careful when you pour the pasta sauce in that it doesn't splatter you because there's hot oil in there. Now we're also going to take our chicken and we're gonna add that in as well. You can also add a little Italian herb seasoning if you want. It's on medium heat. I'm gonna cover this and let it heat all the way through. We only made a half a pound of pasta, but if you have a larger family, you can make a whole pound and just increase the sauce by double. And now we're just gonna add this right to here. Make sure you drain the pasta well. Now I'm just giving this a gentle toss. We're going to take half of the mozzarella, sprinkle it in, and all of the Parmesan and we're gonna to toss this. You can see it's getting melty and ooey gooey. Now I'm just gonna take the rest of the mozzarella and put it right on top. So we let this just sit for a minute so that cheese became ooey and gooey. One thing I do just wanna remind you about while you're removing the chicken from the bones, please be careful you get all the bones. Let's dish this up. This looks so good. You can serve this with a fresh green salad, your favorite vegetable. This is another warm, rustic, delicious meal created from that one chicken. This is the last chicken breast that was on our whole chicken. And we're going to cook this in the crock pot. In my pantry, I have a bottle of Sticky Fingers Carolina Sweet Barbecue Sauce. We got it for free, I think, over the summer. Its best buy date is the end of this month, January. What a great way to use this and the leftover chicken is to make some pulled chicken sandwiches. So there's just one breast in there, but when we pull it apart after the barbecue sauce is on it, it's gonna make several sandwiches. I am going to pour half a bottle because there's only the one breast. Now, of course, you can make your own barbecue sauce by all means. So I put this on low with the barbecue sauce, chicken breast, and we are gonna cover that and we will cook it for about an hour and a half on low. This cooked for an hour and a half on low. And all I am doing is just shredding this chicken to get all that delicious barbecue sauce all over it. Out of all these recipes, this was hands down so easy. It took an hour and a half, but keep an eye on it. It does cook really quick. Now we are gonna make some barbecued sandwiches out of this. So we wish you bon appetito. So after those four delicious meals, this is what we have left. And no, this is not garbage. This is the carcass that has lots of meat on it. It's the skin off the chicken. It's the leg bones that I pulled the meat off of. And now what I advise you to do with this is make some delicious chicken stock. 
I will link a recipe down below on how I make my chicken stock. I hope you enjoyed this because we had a wonderful, delicious time creating these. We hope you enjoyed those recipes. What we were trying to show you is taking common household ingredients, nothing fancy, nothing that you probably don't already have in your pantry, and make four completely different meals from one chicken. I hope it blessed you. It was super economical. It really was. You could see the chicken cost us a little above $5. And if you add in the other supplemental ingredients, some vegetables, a little bit of pasta, some tomato sauce, I don't think it could have been much more than maybe eight to $10 altogether with all the add-ons. And I honestly don't even think it was that much. Hope it encouraged you to be creative with what you have. Now let's get into our no spend January. How did we do? We did really, really well. And I'm keeping it real. We had two slip ups and I'm gonna tell you what they are and how much they cost. Because you know what, we're not perfect. And if I got on here saying we went the whole month and we did, you know what, that's not true. We keep it real and we're gonna share it with you. But first let's go over how we did. We allotted $100 for food for the month and we came in just about $70 for the entire month, which was just to me amazing because it looks like we have not touched anything in our freezer and our pantry. But what it did was it made us be creative, it really showed us how much food we actually have in the house. So we came in about $200 under for food this month which was really, really good. Gas, which I thought would be down because we weren't out doing anything, was the same. Which led me to believe that a lot of the shopping we do is online. When I looked at the last several months, we average about $100 a month on incidentals. The other thing was no thrift stores. We did not go into one thrift store. The incidentals were really eye-opening. I know for me, I was much, much more aware of what I was not buying. Like I would see something and automatically think, oh, well, that was only $7. Nope, I didn't do it. What were our two fails? All right. <laughs> yeah, this is my fail. CVS had 75% off their Christmas merchandise, and this was $1.99. It was filled with popcorn. I bought it. I'm sorry. I tried not to. It got in my cart. So for $2, it was okay. It really was okay, and I love it. I, you know me in Disney. You know me in Disney, and this one has that retro look to it. It's gorgeous, $1.99. So I did fail right here. What was your fail, Paul? I got caught up, we were out driving. I think we had to, what, we visit my parents or something? I, or yeah, it was something. We were, we were in another town and um, it was getting late and I saw that burger sign that lights up and calls <laughs> you, come and get it. So <laughs> we, we went through the drive-thru. At Burger King. But the good news is I had a coupon. I always keep coupons in the car. And we got the two Whopper Juniors, two drinks and two fries for $3.99. So that was a $4 fail right there too. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> you are not. So for $6, those were our fails and we're keeping it real. We could pretend we didn't do it, that we didn't go through the drive through that once or I didn't pay. You know what? We're just like you. We're on this journey together. All in all, it was a great month. Now, moving forward, forward February, that's what we're calling it. We are going to continue eating out of our pantry, our refrigerator, and freezer because we are still very well stocked. 
We will continue to buy those loss leaders, those low priced items. I will show you what we're doing and we will also be much more conscious of that incidental spending. That's got to come down. That's got to come down. Now I'm going to share with you what I was going to tell Paul. This is something that I'm saying on camera so he can be accountable to it. My birthday is in a week or so. And I'm telling you now, I want a no spend birthday just like yours. But that's not fair. I I can't cook. I can't make cake. I can't. What am I? <laughs> well, that's a I'm lot not, of pressure. No, it's not. So we're just going to, I honestly, we have some gift cards and we will make it work. It's, what about candlelight dinner and, and cloth napkins? Okay, everybody, you all have no idea. And okay, so I promise to cut out Burger King for two more weeks. No, nope, no, nope, we're gonna move, and it's not the money, it's the principle. If we did it for him, I want to do it too, and I think it will be super fun. All right, now this is where you all come in. Come on, encourage him, give him ideas. Let's do this, but we will do a no spend. Agree to that. A no spend birthday, yes. Uh, I don't like it. All right, yes, Yay! yes. No all spend right, birthday. no spend. All right, this is good. I know it's a lot of pressure on him, but I will help him, I promise. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was encouraging. We keep it real here. You're part of our family. We, we love you all, we really do. So thank you for taking the time to be with us. If you are new here, click that subscribe button. Come on in and be part of our frugal family. Please give this a big thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed those recipes. We had a wonderful time doing it. Remember, we're going to go forward with February. The question for today is, give Paul some ideas for my no spend birthday because we are doing it. Thank you again. We ask you Stay well, stay safe. We love you so much. And remember, above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, bye-bye.